everybody. Welcome back to The Essential Owl. I am here tonight to make another soap. I apologize for the kind of bad lighting. It's about 6 o'clock, maybe going on 6.30, if that. It's getting really dark really early here now. And my lighting in my house is kind of crappy because my house is 60 years old. And it hasn't had much updating since probably the 50s. <laughs> so a lot of the lighting in the house is pretty inefficient. I'm working on it slowly but surely. Anyway, the soap that we're making today is going to be made with this fragrance oil right here. It's Lavender Surplus from Brambleberry. It, it is a fragrance oil. This is not lavender essential oil. However, I do have a bottle of lavender essential oil and I cannot tell the difference when I open up the caps to this fragrance oil right here this lavender surplus and the actual lavender lavender essential oil I cannot tell the difference between the two this smells exactly like lavender fragrance oil I, I don't have much of a plan for this soap it I want to do if it'll work out I want to do three different shades of purple so what I'm gonna be using today is this titanium dioxide and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dilute this purple vibrance mica from nurture soap it's very very vivid very very purple it's a very nice purple uh, yeah, so what I plan to do is make three different shades of purple using the titanium dioxide and the purple vibrance mica. I've also got two different kinds of glitters here, and I don't know, yeah, you can kind of tell. One of them is a lot darker than the other one. This one is a very dark, and it's not very, very dark, but it's a pretty dark purple. And this one is... Let me see if I can tell the difference between the two. Yeah, this dark purple has a little bit of a blue color shift to it. And that is actually the Wild Violet Mineral Glitter from Nurture. And then the other one is a lighter shade of purple. And this one has more of a silver shift to it. And that is the Eclipse mineral glitter from Nurture. So two different kinds of glitter are going to go on the top. I, because I soap at such a low temperature, a lot of times my batter is, a, is pretty thin. This fragrance oil does not say that it accelerates. It says behaves in cold process, no discoloration, which I wouldn't expect for a lavender scent. But when I do thinner batter, it's I can't really do a high-topped soap. But I'm hoping that I can, my plan is to just mix it a little bit more than usual with this immersion blender to get it to be a little bit thicker than how I normally have it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and add all of my fragrance oil to my base oils. Since there is no, whoo, y'all see that? Woo -hoo -hoo, that could have been bad. Anyway, um, since there's no discoloration and there's no acceleration, I like to add all of my fragrance to my base oils. And that's just, again, that's personal preference. Some people don't like to do that. That's totally fine. That's just how I like to do it. It also helps me not forget <laughs> to add the fragrance that's one of the worst things that can happen is you go through your whole routine you have your batter all mixed up you get a beautiful swirl or whatever it is you're trying to do trying to accomplish with your soap and you look up and there sits your unopened bottle of fragrance oil and it is one of the most disappointing <laughs> one of the most disappointing feelings ever <laughs> it's terrible and I do not want that to happen to me because oh it would just be a bad day 
So I'm going to incorporate this fragrance oil with my base oils just a little. Okay. Now, let's get started making the rest of this. I've kind of got this camera at a different angle than I had it for my last two videos. I kind of propped it up a little bit higher than I did last time so that you all can hopefully see a little bit better what I'm doing. So we'll see how it works. You all let me know if this angle is any better or if there's not really a change. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my lye water solution here ready to go. So I'm going to pour this in here. And I pour down the shaft of the immersion blender to help avoid getting any sort of air bubbles in the batter. Sometimes it's inevitable, but it's always still best to try to keep the air bubbles at a minimum. Because if there's bubbles in the batter and you can't tap them out uh, once you've got everything poured and situated the way that you want it, it will cause air bubbles in the final product, which there's nothing wrong with air bubbles, but it's not the most aesthetically pleasing thing ever. So we like to try to avoid those. And I'm trying to move everything a little bit gentler so that it's not bumping that camera around too much. So here we go. I've got this at a fairly thin trace. It's a little bit thicker than normal. I don't know if that's because of the fragrance oil or what exactly, but that'll be fine since I want it to be a little bit thicker than how I normally do it, just so that I can try to get a high top soap. And if, if I can't get it as thick as I want it to, if I just get too impatient to pour it or whatever, then what I can do is I can pour my bottom layer of my soap and then let the remaining batter kind of set up a little bit and then come back and pour it on top later when the bottom layer is a little bit firmer and can support the top layer of the soap. And that way, it's kind of like cheating a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm going to separate into these other two containers here. And I don't really have much in mind as far as how much of dark purple do I want? How much of light purple do I want? I'm just eyeballing it. It really doesn't matter uh, for the specific pour that I'm doing today. I'm going to be doing a fake funnel pour. So, I haven't tried it before, so I don't know how much different it's going to look from a regular drop swirl like I did in my last video, but it could look quite different. I think it matters on the, it, I think the consistency of your batter matters and, and things like that, but I don't know. I'm going to attempt it because I have not yet done it. So, what I'm going to do now is get all my colors ready over here. I actually want to pour a little bit back into this big bowl here because I changed my mind. <laughs> I want the majority of this soap to be a lighter lavender color if I can help it. So, let us start putting our color in. So I want this one to be this dark vibrant purple and I'll put one part purple and one part white in that one and I will do one part purple and maybe two parts 
white or titanium dioxide in the big container and we'll see what colors we get. This I may have to add a little bit one way or another but we'll see. So there goes my white. Let's do one two parts white in this big bowl. Now I shouldn't have decommissioned my blender because I needed it. Okay. Okay, so what you didn't see is that the camera just fell over twice. <laughs> so let's try this again. Third time's a charm, right? Anyway, I think I've got this purple where I want it to be. It's, I had to end up adding a little bit of white, a little bit more white, a little bit more titanium dioxide to this big container because it was not quite as light as I wanted it. And I'm, I'm still not sure if it's at the right paleness for me, but we'll, we'll let it go. We'll see what happens because I think it'll look nice next to these other shades that I have going on here. What I'm going to do now is scrape down the sides of my bowl because sometimes mica and other colorants like to hang out around the edges of the bowl. They don't get fully incorporated in the bottom as well. And this is still pretty fluid, as you can see. Yeah, still pretty fluid. So even, even though I mixed this up quite a bit, it's still pretty fluid. So what's probably going to happen is I'm going to end up saving some of, the, of whatever color I end up having some left of and coming back later and adding the top. We'll see if it sets up at all. I'm just gonna mix up these other two and see, actually these other two are quite quite a bit thicker. So, which is a little bit surprising because this has more titanium dioxide in it than this one does. And this one doesn't have any at all. And it's still pretty fluid. So this middle color, this middle shade of purple, if you can see, set up quite a bit faster than the big bowl but now that I'm stirring it it's kind of loosening up a little that happens sometimes if you play with it a little bit it'll loosen up this is the dark color that we got let me get this out of the way this is the dark color that we got it's basically the same exact color of the mica by itself that's why I love those vibrance micas they're just they're outstanding now i think that we're ready to start pouring what do you all think let me see i'm trying to see yeah i think that's about as good as an angle as we are going to get so what i'm going to attempt to do is a faux funnel pour a fake funnel pour so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour each color directly into the center over top one, of no one another until my soap batter has reached the top or very close to the top of this mold. And then 
I'm gonna try to end up with more of this left, this lighter lavender color, so that I can pile this on top after it has kind of thickened up a little bit and after the bottom layer has set up. So I will start with the light color. I'm just gonna pour directly into the middle. And this part is gonna take a little bit longer just because you do it little by little by little by little by little. And then let's do this darker color right in the middle. If this takes too long, I'll see what my runtime looks like when I'm editing. And if it is going too long, I'll speed it up. And if I don't speed it up, you all will have to let me know if this is just too boring for you. And if it is, next time I do a pour like this, I will speed it up for you. Or cut it out altogether. But I think a lot of people like to see the pour process. Oh, did a little bit much there. That's okay. I am amazed at how much this fragrance oil smells like the essential oil for lavender. Kind of blows my mind a little bit. See how that's thickening up? I have no idea what the inside of this is going to look like, just so you all know. I have no idea. It may or may not end up looking like poo. <laughs> I've never done this technique before. I've seen a couple other people do this technique. And theirs always seems to end up looking pretty nice. But their batter is usually thinner than mine too, it seems like. I don't know what sort of effect that's going to have. So we will see. Not a whole lot left of this dark color. And it doesn't look like I'm going to have much batter left over to do a high top, which is fine. I have batter all over my gloves. Like I said in, in one of my last videos, I am not a clean soaper. I'm pretty messy. I don't mind it. Because I'm the one that has to do all of my cleanup anyway. I'm going to go ahead and scrape out quite a bit of that. Because I feel like I have more of it left over than the other colors. Let's do our dark color here. And then our light color. Okay. Now, I'm going to tap this down on the floor. So this is what we've got going on right now. It, it looks interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. But what I'm going to do, I think is maybe since this color this lighter color this middle shade i guess is quite a bit more set up than my other two colors i think that what i'll probably do see i don't really want to fill any more up just because i don't want it to overfill because part of the batter is pretty fluid while this is pretty thick so what i'll probably do is let this bottom layer set up some while I wait for this lighter shade in this big container to set up some more, which probably won't take too long, but I will probably spoon them on kind of haphazardly with the different colors 
um, alternating, I guess, with the different purples alternating on the top. Do something a little bit different. Sometimes I like to experiment. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see if this is going to be a works or a doesn't. But got most of the batter scraped down into the bottoms of these containers. So I am going to do a little bit of cleanup, but for you, I will be right back. Okay, so it has been about 20 minutes. You can see, I'm sorry that it's shaking a little bit, but it's, um, it's set up quite a bit, this bottom layer. It's still a little bit fluid, but the rest of the soap batter that I left over for the top is pretty thick and I'm afraid if I wait too long it'll be too hard and I don't want that <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead yeah if you can see how thick that is it's just sticking to the spoon so I or to my spatula I don't know if this is gonna work out or not I really don't so let's go ahead let's go ahead and give this a try i'm just gonna very carefully kind of try to just spoon this on the top i'm hoping that this bottom layer is set up enough to support it it looks like it is so that's good So I've got all my top spooned on. Now I'm going to take this little thin silicone spatula thing. This is what I usually will use to texturize the tops of my soap. Sometimes it looks fine and other times it don't. So let's just see what happens. What I need to do is kind of smooth it out a little bit actually so that it covers the entire top but I don't want to do too much and muddy it up. But it is thick enough that it won't muddy too much as long as I don't overdo it. And a lot of this is going to be covered up with glitter anyway, so it's not going to matter too much. And I can go back in and fix these sides later, but it's still going to drive me a little bit nuts. So let's just do that. There we go. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of mess with these sides a little bit, kind of pull it up to the top towards the middle. And I'll do that on both sides. And I, like I said, I'm, this is not my forte, this, these texturized tops. Others are much more skilled at this than I am. And a lot of that too has to do with the fact that the ones that are really good at this most of the time have quite a bit more experience at doing them than I do because I don't do them that often. Sorry if I'm blocking, I'm trying not to here. And I'll kind of do this to the top just for a little bit of interest. Okay, I think I'm done texturizing the top and I will, uh, after I have all of this done, the glitter on and everything like that, I'll bring you in for a close up. I know you can't really see it all that great, especially with this lighting. So now I'm going to take my two glitters. I'm going to go in first with the darker glitter and I've got them in these salt and pepper shakers, these plastic salt and pepper shakers. And I bought these at the Dollar Tree. They make special little glitter spritzers. <laughs> and they look really cool. But I don't do glitter that often. And this serves uh, me for what I need it for anyway. I just love this glitter. I think it's so pretty. Now I'm going to go in with a lighter glitter. I originally wanted to put some pink Himalayan salt on the top of this, but I decided against it. I don't know if I'm going to regret that or not. <laughs> Let me... See if I've got any spots that need a little bit of touching up. There is a little bit here and there. Some soapers say you can't really go wrong with too much glitter. Not sure if I agree, but it definitely does make everything look better. Glitter is very, very good at hiding your mistakes. So, a little bit of here. Okay, I'm going to clean up my edges a little bit here. So, this is what we have. It's very shimmery and very purple. <laughs> so that's what we've got. Now, all that there is left to do is to sit and wait for it to harden up. I waited a little bit too long in the towards the end of the day to probably cut this soap tonight so I don't know if I'll get to that or not but let's go in for a close-up so here is the soap that we just made 
think I am going to call it Whisper. I used to make a bath bomb that was lavender and it was it was fairly popular. Let's see how close I can get. Oh yes. Isn't that nice? Anyway, I used to make a bath bomb that was lavender and it was called Whisper. So I think I'll call the soap the same thing because like I said, that, that fragrance is scarily similar <laughs> to the actual essential oil for lavender. So that is all that I have for you guys for now. I am going to go ahead and let this sit for six to eight hours, possibly overnight before I cut, so that we can see what the inside looks like. Um, make sure, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know what you think down in the comments below.